After spending some time with this new 2022 Golf GTI, I've got some things that I like and some things that I don't like coming right up. But real quick, I want you to know I have a full review of this GTI. If you want to see all the details, objective information, and a test drive, this one's just going to be some pros and some cons, but let's jump into it. The next thing, let's go ahead and start it up. So push button start. The thing I don't like is it's going to be two tiered. It's going to be two different things. Volkswagen absolutely butchered the controls in here. I can't stand them. First of all, I was in the Jetta GLI not long ago and it had the same steering wheel controls and they drove me nuts. They're unresponsive. They don't work that well. There's a slider for the volume, which can work well, but everything else that you have to actually push, it just is not ideal. And I don't love the glossy black look of it. I think it looks nice, but I don't think it's going to look nice in the future. And to control things, it's just not responsive. It does give you some feedback, but it's very delayed. It's not when you push it, it's like push and then thump and then it works. Push and then thump and then it works. I don't care for it. I just have not gotten used to it and it's easy to accidentally bump something on there as well. Now the second part to that is over here. So, you know, we used to have the, the controls down here, super easy, climate control, fan speed, all that stuff, even a volume knob. We don't have any of that right now. In order to get to your climate controls, you have to push this little climate button on more glossy black uh, settings right there. In order to adjust your fan speed, you have to push that button and then get into the screen in order to adjust your fan speed or to do anything with your climate controls for that matter on there. I don't like it at all. This is a single zone climate control, but we have two separate spots for climate. To adjust your temperature, you have to touch up here. So you can use it as like a slider function for a few degrees, or you can tap like that. It's just not the most practical, smooth operating thing, especially when you're driving. And a little more is, you know, there's just this, this infotainment's a little bit to get used to, but my main complaint is the fact that you have to touch here and then go up onto the screen. Even for your drive mode, you have to tap right there. I still wish we had just some physical controls in here. This is the way things are moving. Maybe you love it. I like the way that things look. It's very clean and simplified, but it's not the most practical to use. Now, another thing I don't like is behind the wheel again. Most of you aren't gonna care, and this car is not meant to be quiet. It's totally fine. When there's some road noise and some engine noise, it makes for a more engaging experience. However, if you are gonna take this on the highway or a coarse textured road, there's a ton of road noise that gets in here. It's loud, it can be obnoxious, it can drown out your nice Harman Kardon audio system. So if you do a lot of highway driving, keep in mind the road noise. It's not really a valid complaint with a car like this, but if it's a daily driver, distance driver, cruiser, you're probably gonna want something a little quieter. All right, now behind the wheel, first thing I wanna start with with my likes and the pros is that it is still fun to drive. It's still got good sharp handling. It's got a punchy little turbo. It handles so well and it sounds good too. So Volkswagen did not lose the aspect of fun driving with this. There's partial pedal and it's got more power. It's got more torque. You can get a manual transmission standard or a DSG, their DSG transmission optional. Let me put us in manual mode here. Oops. It's got a nice little sound to it too. It's fun to drive, it's got good acceleration. There is some turbo lag and some delay at times, but it's, it's overall quick. Even the paddles are quick. Quick downshift. even tolerates those hard hefty downshifts but overall very fun to drive still and more power and more torque and the option of a manual or an automatic okay the next two categories of things that i like are going to be based off trim levels so this first one is just how much you get on the base trim of this golf gti let's just go through a few things now keep in mind this is not the base but i'm going to show you what you get with the base because you get a lot with it First thing is these cloth plaid seats are gonna be heated standard on the base model. The next thing is that you're gonna have a heated steering wheel on the base model too. How often do you get a heated steering wheel at that price point and on a base trim level? You'll also get an automatic dimming rear view mirror. No flippy switch, automatic dimming on every trim. Even the digital cockpit is standard too. There's different views that you can have. It's upgraded from the previous digital cockpit. So much information that you can have and customize on here on every trim. 
there's even a wireless charger on every trim as well. And you're still gonna get good performance. You get the same horsepower, same torque. You can still get a manual transmission. You can get the DSG transmission, limited slip differential on that base model. So it's got everything. That's the one that I would go for. Now the next thing is what you'll get on the top Autobahn trim. Like I said, this is the SE trim, not the top trim, middle trim. But let me tell you what you get on the Autobahn. It really kind of starts to step things up. So I told you that we get heated seats standard, but on the Autobahn, you'll get 12-way power adjustable leather seats with memory settings that are also heated and ventilated. The back seats will even be heated on that top Autobahn trim as well. And these air vents are standard on every trim, but wait. In that top Autobahn trim, backseat passengers actually get some luxury treatment. Not only are these seats heated, but they also get their own climate controls. That's something you find in like SUVs and minivans. You get your own climate controls back here. There is even a performance bump too. That Autobahn is gonna give you Volkswagen's adaptive suspension as well for the best ride and handling combination. And then obviously ours doesn't have it, but that top Autobahn trim is gonna give you a head-up display readout on the steering wheel or on the windshield. So just another thing that makes that Autobahn top notch. Okay, now the next thing that I like is on the inside and you're probably gonna laugh, it's really small, but let me show you. I have a love affair with Volkswagen's armrest right here. So it is soft and padded, that's not what I like. It also slides forward. I like that, but that's not my favorite thing. But just like you've seen before, this is not new, but this is something that I really like. It can be ratcheted up to where it is literally like a legit armrest and you can grab the steering wheel, have very comfortable position here. You can still got, you know, the option to open it up, keep it down low or ratchet it however high you want to, to be comfortable. I love that. That makes a big difference with comfort. A lot of cars nowadays don't have a movable armrest. It's just kind of built in, integrated, and usually pretty low. But this one is very comfortable to live with. But now on here, let me show you. Ambient lighting. There's ambient lighting on every single trim. And I love that Volkswagen did this. Obviously, you can see there's a total of 30 different colors here that it lets you go through, but you can change where they are. So let's just go with like a red here and then maybe a blue so you've got red up on top we've got blue down below i think that's pretty sweet you can reverse it up you can do all one color so you got red everywhere you can do upper middle and then lower different color variations you can see even in the door colors armrests I like the ambient lighting in here. It's not super bright and super intrusive, but it's bright enough to enjoy and kind of get a vibe in here, depending on how you want it. So those were just a few of the pros and the cons that I thought of with this Golf GTI after spending some time with it. Obviously, it's not perfect, but I like what Volkswagen did. It's still very fun to drive. You've got good power. You've got the same kind of practicality that you get with other Golfs as well. Let me know what you think down below and what your favorite things are and be sure to check out this full review because there's a lot to look at in this GTI. Thank you so much and have a great day.